what you're hearing is true 100%. You can watch it, a close listen to the different things, tell you what it does and what it doesn't do. This is an amazing little beast. Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher, Director of Product Optimization here at Sweetwater Sound. Today, I'm excited to show you this prototype of the Arturia Mini Brute Analog Synthesizer. And uh, this is an amazing little beast, uh, mostly because of its price. Um, it's, it comes in under $500, and it has a lot of tremendous features you just would not expect from a true analog synthesizer. And uh, so we're going to walk through some of the parameters, but I want to give you a real close listen to the different things, tell you what it does and what it doesn't do, and uh, see if it's right for you. So one of the primary things about the Mini Brute is that it has a 100% analog signal path. And by that, I mean that the oscillator, filter, and amp are 100% analog, and the entire audio chain is analog, all the way through to the audio out. Now, obviously, it has digital control because it has MIDI in and out, uh, the arpeggiator, it has uh, the LFO is digitally controlled, but what you're hearing is true 100% analog synthesis. And you think, how can they afford something like this under 500 bucks for true analog like that? And it's, it's a couple things. One is that there's only one oscillator, but they do have some really clever things to get around that. And the other is that although there are many knobs and sliders, uh, there is no MIDI control over all of these knobs and sliders. So the MIDI is basically for your notes, your pitch, your modulation, and aftertouch, which is really great to have aftertouch on this. And um, so this is a synth that you basically are playing by the seat of your pants. Even if you've already recorded the notes and everything, you're still going to go in and move these knobs in real time if that's how you want to record them. Uh, but that's kind of neat. It, uh, it actually will give you uh, some motivation to dig a little deeper into real-time synthesis. So first thing I'm going to show you is the oscillator. And first one I'll show you is the square wave, or I'm sorry, the sawtooth wave. And we'll throw the filter all the way open. And what they give you is this thing called an ultrasaw, which is sort of a simulation of multiple waves uh, multiple oscillators, all slightly detuned, and it's a nice thick sound, and it's the kind of sound you would get if you had multiple oscillators. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. And you can go pretty crazy with it. But it gives you that nice, slightly out of tune, phasey sound that defines analog synthesis. So you got that. And each one of these waveforms, and this is really interesting, you have sawtooth square, triangle, and noise, uh, and a sub oscillator. And each of them has a cool little trick assigned to it. So, for example, on your square wave, you have pulse width modulation. So you can sweep the pulse width from 50% to 90%. And on the triangle, they have this thing called metalizer that goes from the very clean triangle sound. Oh, I already got turned up. So there's, there's triangle. And then very much not a triangle. And all three of these have uh, different controls. Uh, the uh, pulse width and uh, metalizer allow you to send envelope control to that. So Here's the square wave. Now I have the filter envelope controlling the pulse width. It's very neat. Um, and we also have a sub oscillator. So you bring the sub oscillator in and it can be either one octave down or two octaves down. And it can be a uh, sine wave or score wave. There's sine, there's square. And by being able to bring in different amounts of that, really getting lots of different timbres, and you can also take that down two octaves. So if you have all of the other waves turned down, you can get a ridiculously low pitch, especially via MIDI. 
So there's that. Um, and since you can bring all the different waves in together, you are getting a really interesting mix of sounds that you wouldn't expect from a single oscillator. Now the bend range lets you go from a half step all the way to an octave. This is a prototype unit. It doesn't quite go to the octave, but I promise that the, the uh, factory units will. Um, but it's really cool to have any amount. There's a fifth. And um, we also have white noise and an audio in, so you can bring in any other synth or drum machine or vocal parts, whatever you want, to run through this very cool filter, and which we'll talk about next. The filter uh, is a multi-mode filter, so you can have a low pass, which I'll sweep here. And then with resonance, Lots of resonance. And this thing will definitely scream for you if you want it to. And um, the uh, filter has a tracking from 0% to 200%, which is very flexible. And you have an envelope, both positive and negative amount, so you can do a lot of different envelope tricks. And one thing to say about the envelopes is they have a switch for fast and slow, uh, which lets you do some really snappy stuff. So here's the slow, which lets me do really slow envelope things. Eventually it'll get up there. But when I go to fast, you can start getting into percussive areas that you can't on all synths. So that's very flexible. Um, and so now I've already swept the low pass for you. Now I'll do band pass. High pass. And a notch filter. Which when we get into the LFO, you'll see you can do some really cool phasey sort of things. I'll throw my filter back open, and I want to show you um, this LFO, which is uh, very cool. It has a one, two, three, four, five. It has uh, five different wave shapes, six different wave shapes, sorry. Uh, sine, triangle, saw, uh, square, uh, random, and a smooth random. And they can be assigned to lots of different things simultaneously and at different amounts. So, for example, I could put the square up, and I'm modulating pulse width modulation here. And you can do all of these knobs are bi-directional, so bipolar, so you can have both positive or negative modulation from the same LFO. Here's pitch. And these are very fast LFOs. And you can do the same thing to the filter. And you can even do amplitude, so you can have tremolo. start bringing them all in
can see there's quite a lot of options. Um, and the clock can either be free running or it can be linked to your arpeggiator. So you can get some very neat stuff there. Let's normal those all out. Um, and then you have yet another LFO that goes to your vibrato and you could trigger it in several ways. Um, you could put it on aftertouch, which is very useful. And it can go pretty deep. It's a decent aftertouch as well. You can also do square wave trills both up or down. So here's up or down. And here's the same thing on uh, sign again. And, and, and again, this LFO goes very fast as well. This is why you're buying analog. Just to get those kind of effects. Um, Aftertouch can also do cutoff if you want. So I'll close the filter. So you have control over that. Um, and then the mod wheel can also do either the LFO amounts to all these different things. to have different depths and polarities for each of the modulation assignments means there's some crazy stuff to be done here. Um, there's also glide. And, um, and now we get on to the arpeggiator. And the arpeggiator has both an on and a hold so you could just touch something and it'll stay there. lock the clock to the arpeggiator. So, if one of the things you really need from a synth is to have two oscillators so that you can have say like a fifth interval or something. Here's a couple ideas for, for this one. Uh, because of the low price point, um, one idea is you can buy two mini brutes for less than a thousand dollars. You'll have two arpeggios, you'll have four LFOs, you'll have all these different wave shapes, you'll have four envelopes, and you'll have the dual LFO abilities that you'd have. And again, for under a thousand dollars for a very powerful synthesizer. Um, but here's another idea. Um, I'm going to bring in this thing called the ring thing from uh, Electro Harmonics. And among other things it does, it does pitch shifting really well. And I'll show you how you can do that. So let me set that up. So here's the ring thing. And I have it set up right now just to do unison. So here it is without it. And then I turn it on. And already you can hear a little bit of, of phasing, uh, a little bit of detune. Um, and I can do fine detuning. But the key thing is that I can do coarse detuning now. Like I'll do a fifth. So I can do coarse detuning and fine detuning. <laughs> along with all the other cool ring modulation things you can do. But the idea is, um, by adding just another 220 bucks, you get a really great mo ring modulator and pitch shifter that all of a sudden 
makes up for the lack of having a second oscillator and the two of them combined really does some powerful things. Um, and now for the last thing I'm going to just throw some delay on this and have some fun with the filters. So I just have a, a standard uh, stereo delay going on over there. I'm going to turn the ring thing off, but I'm going to leave the delay on. And uh, maybe I'll get the arpeggiator going too. Envelopes. Then I'll turn up the brute factor, kicking some heavy uh, grit, yeah. So that's just a quick little run through of this amazing little synth. Uh, if you have any further questions, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for it.